In this week's case of the week, again, we see find a dentist doing a lot of things correctly, um, a dentist who prescribed anterior bruxer, but I want to give you a closer look at what we're able to do today with CAD CAM. So uh, this is for crowns on teeth number seven through 10. So we have a, a full arch uh, impression here in a plastic stock tray um, that looks nice. And when we pour it up, we end up with this model. And we can see a lot of what we need to see here. Very nice preps. Uh, as well. Um, as we look at the articulated model, that's Bruxer anterior, by the way, that sticker that's on there. Uh, clearance looks like, is there enough room here? Make sure those dies are seated all the way. And uh, these are four crowns that were made here as well, and they want to match that, uh, match the same shade as those. So we'll see when we scan this if there is, in fact, enough room there. Might be tight for Emacs, probably gonna be okay for Brooks or Anterior. And a couple other things that, the, um, that this dentist sent in. One was a uh, pre-op photograph of what the patient uh, looked like. They have two crowns here that they're not real fond of, so they're gonna do, redo these four crowns here and make them lighter, go with that higher value shade you see on the lower. And the dentist also sent us a picture of the preparations too, which is nice because um, for something like an all ceramic crown on the anterior, probably more so with Emacs than Bruxer, we like to know the stump shade and what we're dealing with underneath it. In fact, we like to know that for no prep veneers as well. Um, and we're not sure how to ask for it because there's no stump with a no prep veneer. So let's say we were gonna do veneers on these two teeth. Maybe, let's say we're gonna do Emacs no prep veneers. We really need to know the shade of the tooth in this state so that we know whether or not we need to do any opaquing on the veneer. For example, if you wanted to do no prep veneers on these two teeth and take them from this shade, this whatever C3 might be, to uh, B1, for example, uh, it's not gonna work with no prep unless they were zirconia veneers. And even then, we'd probably want some reduction for, for other reasons. So um, we do like seeing photographs of the teeth, especially with a shade tab in place. But here we can see that you know, because it is for anterior bruxer, none of this, none of these preps are going to uh, show through. So that's not an issue, even though anterior bruxer is more uh, translucent than regular bruxer. As long as there's adequate reduction, it won't show through. If it gets really thin, there's a possibility it might show through. So also in addition to this, and this is probably the most important part, the dentist sent us a study model. Um, of what these teeth look like. Added a little wax there on that central incisor, wanted to build that out a little bit and kind of show it to the patient and didn't want us to follow this exactly. Wanted us to make like the centrals not quite as bulky and add a little length to those uh, as well. But we're certainly able to follow a study model exactly too uh, if you want us to. And this is part of the promise of CAD CAM that we really haven't been able um, to do before. And so when we get this, we scan all the stone models, the prep model and this model, and then we take it into the digital environment. So the first thing we're going to look at here is going to be a scan of the study model. And you can see this is that, that study model here. This is the scan of what that looks like. And below it, we have superimposed it onto this scan, which is the scan of the preparations themselves. So this black line represents the study model that the dentist took the impression of and sent to us. And this represents the prep that's on the two. So you can see we do in fact have uh, adequate reduction. I, I didn't print the screenshot, but when you click the two dots here, we have uh, a millimeter and it's a little close here if we were doing Emacs, but we have plenty of room here uh, for anterior Bruxer. So we can see that what the dentist wanted to do, you know, basically replicate what's here with some minor changes can be accomplished because of how much much um, reduction there was. And so that's one of the first things we do is kind of compare the two and make sure we can do it. So then the software proposes uh, four crowns uh, for this. And for example, the proposal are these four crowns right here, but we know that the dentist doesn't want these uh, four crowns like this. He wants us to follow the study model with a couple changes and that's where we can start to make some modifications. So we can either make exactly what you saw here, if you want to just absolutely duplicate that because the patient was happy with it, or the software will make a proposal and then we can make some changes to it. And that's essentially what was done right here. And that's what this cross section is that you're looking at. And so this black line is still the preparation. You'll remember that prep outline from the first time. 
this yellow line, this golden line right here, is the dye spacer. So this is 50 microns of dye spacer with a little extra here, just sometimes if we have a sharp edge here, we have to leave just a little extra space here for when it gets milled. So this is our virtual dye spacer all along here. And so that's our 50 microns. This black line represents the minimum uh, material thickness for anterior bruxer which is uh, uh, beyond the die spacer, of course. And so if we want to have a crown, this is the, the minimum material thickness right along here. And so if, in fact, this was what the proposal was, we could pull it off, uh, but we're not doing that. This is the study model line, this black line that comes around here like this. So that actually represents what's on these teeth. And as the doctor indicated to us, he wanted it to be less bulky on the facial and about half a millimeter longer. And so we've taken this proposal and changed it to kind of fit his criteria. So the study model of the crowns that are already on there is this black line, and we've changed it to this yellow line so they're not as bulky. We can see it comes back towards the lingual in the incisal third to give us that flat facial profile. And then the incisal edge is about half a millimeter longer than the incisal edge on the study model, and then it comes back and comes down to the ling lingual margin over on the side. And so this really allows us to be able to dial in the shape and size of these teeth. We can always uh, take a screenshot of this and send it to the dentist and say, is this what you're looking for? Uh, if the dentist has a pre-op study model of either temporaries or the patient's natural teeth and wants to replicate that exactly, these two lines would be right on top of each other. So the proposed, the design would be right on top of what the, the impression that the doctor sent in of the study models or the temps or the patient's original teeth because we were going to duplicate that exactly. Or if the dentist wants to make it a little longer and a little flatter, that's why you see this different line. This is the actual crown, actual anterior bruxer crown that's going to be milled is this yellow line and then sent back to the dentist. And so rather than just having a technician do it by hand, which is how it always had to be done and just kind of eyeball it, we're really able to go in here and be able to make specific um, changes in terms of, hey, let's take this back and make it not so bulky like they asked for and make it a little bit longer. Or maybe you want it bulkier or even longer or shorter or whatever or follow the model exactly. But with today's CAD CAM technology, we can literally do whatever you want to do and we can send you a screenshot for your approval too to make sure that the crowns you get back are in fact following uh, the prescription that you sent in. Um, so these crowns haven't been fabricated yet. I grabbed this as it was on its way uh, to the mill because I thought it was a pretty fascinating uh, case to show the difference uh, between the two. This is again, this yellow line is the actual design and this is the study model. If you take this mask off on the computer, you can see where the actual design under, uh, underlays this. Um, and so it's really the ability to give you exactly what you're looking for based on what the patient has told you, either uh, according to their original teeth, their natural teeth, or to the temporaries that are in place, or the old crowns they have that always seem bulky and too short to them. This is your opportunity to really communicate with the lab how that I want these flatter and I want these longer, but it can't be done without a study model. This is really kind of the key for anterior cases is you sending in a study model. Um, the best thing would be make the changes here, take an impression, use Bisacryl to transfer it to the patient's mouth and get their approval. But even a study model like this, if you say, oh, I want these teeth a little longer and a little flatter, that at least gives us somewhere to start. And you, you and the patient are gonna have a much better chance of getting four crowns in the anterior that are gonna be uh, as nice as you'd both like them to look.